everyone and welcome to my quilting life. I'm Tiffany. So today we are going to, I'm making a video, so that we can make a puff pillow quilt. I would show you one as an example, but I seem to have now run out of them and need to make more. So I'm going to pretty much record the process as best as possible for you all to see me making a puff pillow quilt for a uh, crib size mattress. So yeah, hang around and let me get to it. So to make this puff pillow quilt, first of all, what you're going to need is some supplies. Now I am only making a um, crib mattress size, so what I have gotten is 10 fat quarters of the colors that I'm going to be working with. So I got five darks, like five, what you would read is a medium color, but two, all these the darks, and five what I'm calling the lights, although that this color could probably have come over here, but these are my, what I'm calling baby blues and my grays. So super adorable. Now these are fat quarters, there's 10 of them. I only got 10 to be on the safe side because anything else I can save and use in a different project. Then you're going to need some yardage. So puff pillow quilts, you have to make individual pillows, which I will walk you through. I bought um, five yards, obviously you don't need five yards, but I bought five yards of a solid white muslin. The reason why I bought a 100% cotton muslin is because this will be on the inside of the quilt and you will never see it. This part is what's going to create the pillow. This will be what holds these pillows together. So there's another thing. But technically for this project we would only need probably two and a quarter yards. Then a backing fabric. I just so happen to choose a fleece because I have plenty of this Olaf fleece right here. I have not plenty, I have three yards of it, but I only need probably one yard of it for the back of it. So actually a, a yard and a half is what I'll need because this is 45 inch fabric. So yeah, I'll need a yard and a half of it. And then another thing that we are going to need, and I'm going to tip this up so you guys can see and turn this this way. To make puff pillow quilts, you need puff. A big bag or box of it. I just so happen to have stopped and picked up this big huge thing of polyfill, which is the same thing as everything else. So for those of you who are trying to save money, this is probably the easiest way to save money. This is what's in pretty much all standard typical pillows, so why not put it in a baby's pillow quilt? And then another thing, I make mine just a little bit differently. So when I add the back to my puff pillow quilt, I also, with the fleece, I put a poly cotton um, batting between the pillow top and all the pillow layers and the fleece back. So I got me a crib size um, batting as well, which is going to go in between the layers. And you guys will see how I do it during this process. So follow along and let's get to it. So check it out. You get to watch a movie while I teach. So we're going to take these fat quarters, and the first thing before we do anything else is we are going to open them all up, and a lot of fat quarters, no matter where you buy them, they have a cardboard piece in them. We're going to pull all these out, every single one of them. I usually just kind of get them thrown somewhere. You know, I'll pull all these out, and then I'm going to press every single one of these. Why might you say do we press them all? Well, because they have so many wrinkles and folds in them, I don't want those in there when I start cutting. I want these to be nice, flat, and as straight as possibly can be when I get to my cuts. So for now, I'm going to open all these up. And don't mind my, my messy room, you know, that you see, you know, around you. <laughs> or probably some glares from lighting, but hey. I'm trying here, and I'm trying to make videos without have gotten having gotten a camera yet. So we're doing it, but I emptied my tablet off completely so that you guys can see some videos that aren't always live. So 
again I'm just pulling all of these little cardboard pieces out some places put them some places don't and I'm gonna move them all to the side right here I'll just stick them right there and I'm gonna open every single one of them up and I'm going to grab a spray bottle of water and I'm just gonna just spray I know I'm spraying water kind of close to my other machine here so just because I don't want it to get wet we'll cover it <laughs> so I'm just going to spray a little bit of water and then I'm going to take my iron oops and I'm going to give them a really good steam press because we again don't want any wrinkles folds pleats and obviously this iron does not help with the cord coming in like it's doing so I kind of iron it both ways grain straight grain and the side of the grain and I go back and forth a few times until it's nice and flat and I have no folds or wrinkles I'm hoping that you can see so when I'm done it looks like a nice flat piece of fabric and then I am going to stack it out of the way which you won't see me on the camera for just a moment while I stack it So now we're at the next one and we are doing five and three quarters only because, you know, you can do your numbers, whatever you want, as long as your bottom part of your um, pieces, when you make your puff part of your pillow, the little pillows that are going to be making this, as long as that number is smaller. So here's cut one. We're going to try to separate that just ever so slightly so I can see the line for number two cut. Again, I'm cutting mine five and three quarters because my fat corner did not have enough to cut. Ever 
just slightly slide that one out of the way. Back to that side. And my last five and three quarter right here. Oh, this one has way more. Some of these fabrics just aren't cut the same. But I'm not going to save any of that because it's not an inch. So there's not an inch worth of any of these to make anything. So I don't need it. Now I'm going to come over to the side. And I'm going to line it up on the five and three quarter this way. And I'm going to left hand cut again. And all these should be nice and straight still. I'm going to put my weight up here. Hold it down. I'm going to block the camera for just two seconds. <laughs> because of the angle, and I'm sorry about that. and three quarters because we're making them five and three quarter inch squares. Line that up on there. Use the weight to hold it down and I'm going to left hand cut this. It feels like I cut harder with my left hand than I do my right hand. Maybe it's because of the awkwardness. All right, one more time. Nice and tight. Five and three quarter inch squares. And my little leftovers right here. So these are my leftovers. And there's enough here to make something nice and little. So now I have a big huge pile of leftovers. I find something to do with. And then these. Just going to stack them all up. And we're going to get to the next part of what we need to do. I'm going to stack this whole thing up, toss it out of the way. I'll be back in two seconds. So now we're going to cut the bottom pieces, which is the muslin. So if our top is now five and three quarter, our bottom is going to be four and three quarter. We are cutting to be an inch the bottom piece to be an inch smaller so if you do a five inch block you need a four inch block underneath if you're doing a six inch block you need a five inch block underneath so since i'm doing five and three quarter on the top i need four and three quarter on the bottom so i'm going to take my muslin and i'm going to find both ends here and i'm just going to fold this up and start cutting four and three quarter inch squares off of this. I'm just going to line it up right here. I'm going to try to keep it as nice as possible, although muslin is never really, I'm not even going to bother pressing it either. I'm just going to get it all nice and straight and flat right here. And now I need to make Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I need to make eight, nine, I need to make nine, ten cuts. Ten, four, and three quarter cuts, because this is like 33, 34 inch. Muslin is a little bit smaller. Well, some are. This just so happens to be the smaller one. I think it's 33 inch. So, let's get this. So I need four and three quarters. And I'm going to go ahead and just cut all this up and I'll meet you back in just a minute.
that's not supposed to happen. This is what I get for cutting my hand. A waste of fabric. So that happens sometimes. And I'll just trim it off. I need 10. I think I'm going to cut one more strip just to be on the safe side. If anything, this could just go in my scraps. Plus, in case you mess up, it's always good to have a little bit extra. Try to re straighten that back up real quick. And now let's go for the borders here one more time. This time, let's try not to go crooked. All right, that should be plenty for now. That gives me plenty of muslin for later. So now I'm just cutting the muslin at four and three quarter inch. I line them all up, making sure that my cuts are nice and straight. And these will be four and three quarters. And I have them stack 12 actually layers as there's six in each pile. That's fine, no biggie. A 60 millimeter rotary cutter should be able to take care of it every time. But I wouldn't cut more than 12 layers. So now I'm going to take my rows and temporarily separate my number. I'm going to stick that aside for a second. We're going to grab the smaller piece and the top piece. And I'm going to connect this end together. I'm going to put it under here, right sides up. Okay, and it's a lot bigger, obviously. So I'm going to just connect the end. And I'm going to hold it under the machine for a second and take a few stitches. And I'm going to stop. Then I'm going to take it and align it with the bottom piece, like so. Hold my finger there, bringing this up to about the middle and creating a fold. Okay, now I'm just going to sew to the other end. I'm going to take the same piece. I'm going to start on this side, take a couple stitches in. Again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pick it up like this. I'm going to align it with the end of the bottom piece. I want it nice and straight. And I'm going to take that fold. And all my folds are going to go the same way. Down towards me. I'll take it again. Take a couple stitches after turning it. Lift it up again. Hook those two ends, so I'm hooking the ends, lining the pieces up. Again, I'm going to fold the piece towards me. And this is the side I'm going to leave open right here. So now I have created this pocket. Okay, so now it's a pocket. We're going to stuff this pocket in a minute after we make all these pieces for this row. Okay. So the back one, bottom one is flat. The top ones have a pocket. So I make sure all my s spins go the same exact way. So I'm going to do it again. Grab another piece. I'm 
going to align the end up to start right here, like you would any piece, but this is right sides up instead. <coughs> Excuse me. Take a couple stitches in, flip the piece up with my fingers, and align the bottom, holding it with my finger, and somewhere in the middle, creating a little piece that holds towards me. You don't have to cut threads every time. Obviously, I just do it for the video. Take a couple stitches in, lift the piece up, just the top one only, lifting the top one only, aligning it towards me, and then taking that middle and folding it on top of itself. Again, take a couple stitches, pick up that piece, align it on the bottom. I'm keeping the, the line on too as well, nice and straight. Pocket number two has now been created. And we're going to leave these like this so that we can stuff them. And I am using a quarter inch seam as well.
on my little rows. And I'm going to try to keep the rows together just for kind of organization's sake. So here's my little pocket that we made. And I can stick my hand in it, right? Like so. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our big huge bag of polyfill. And get yourself comfortable. I just sit on the floor because, you know, I can watch TV and do this at the same time. So I'm going to take a bunch. I'm going to kind of separate it a little, you know? Like so. I'm going to take one. And I am going to put a handful like this inside this little pocket. Just a handful. Maybe just a little bit more to make that a full handful. So, like so. And it's going to be like, well, how are you going to close it? Well, simple. Same way we close, you know, sealed off the first scene. So for now, I'm just going to shove it all down. And I'm going to set it aside. I'm going to take another handful. Try to make it a little bit equal, you know. And then I'll just take and stuff another bag, another little pillow. Shove it in there, so that's the back side, that's what it looks like. And if you want, you could take your fingers and shove it in, but we'll move things around as we go. So there's bag number two, or pillow number two. Again, another hand's worth. I'm going to take it and shove it in here. And I'm just going to go across all of these. big huge pile of puffs that need to be closed. So let me get this started and we'll show you how to close them. So we're going to take a puff and they're filled. They're pretty tight can see. Now I'm going to pull the edges and I'm going to try to keep the, for now, keep all the fluff inside and I'm going to press it down with my hand, keeping the one side here and the same as we did with the other sides. I'm going to put a couple stitches in, then I'm going to feel for the center and I'm going to flip it by holding the end right here, holding the center right here, creating my fold nice and flat and aligned with the edge and I'm going to sew down it so now my puff is closed now you can move them around if you want but there's still another stage to go after this so let me repeat this again again I'm holding this end I'm flattening the puff out of the way putting this one in I'm going to put other stitches in I'm going to pull this other end out nice and flat Grab my center, make sure that fluff is in there, grab my center, and I'm going to make that crease, and I'm sorry my angle kind of sucks, make my crease, see that? And I have another closed puff. Now I'm going to try to change the angle for you. So let's close these puffs up.
So I'm going to shove all the stuffing in there. I'm going to take this far end. I'm going to put it under here. Block the camera. Take a couple stitches just to be my third hand. Fold it down. So a quarter of an inch down. Take another one. Make sure all that stuffing is in there. Nice and flat. Hook it up a little bit. Hold this end. Fold it down. Just grab it. Fold it down. It's kind of easier to fold them than it is to pin them. So I'm shoving it all in. Putting a couple stitches first. I'm going to pull this end right here with my finger. Manipulating the fabric pretty much. I'm coming down. I'm at the part where I'm going to take and hook all these rows together. So give me a second because this is the part where I'm going to get up and down quite a bit. So I'm going to just face this towards the machine and show you how this is done. So hi guys. So what I'm going to do is instead of going up and down, I'm just going to come to my closest row to me and consider that row one. Exactly how they're laid down, I'm going to pick them up and place them back down. So this is where the fun part begins. It's putting them together, technically. It's, it's not the fun part. It is fun. Don't get me wrong. It's not the fun part, though. It's the... It's best if you can lay the project in front of you part, but unfortunately I have to get back up and down to do this. So bear with me and let's get this started. So here's the first two pups, exactly how I picked them up. Now you're wondering how in the world do you get these together because they're already pups. They're pillows. Well, simple. Right sides together, shove them down. <laughs> no, seriously, shove them down. <laughs> we are going to take these and I'm going to put them um, right sides together. I'm going to take these two ends right here and I'm just going to kind of start the seam right here, holding these two together, making sure that these are aligned, and I'm just going to start this seam, holding it, 
and I'm going to connect these other two ends, keeping it nice and straight, and I'm going to hold it with my finger, nice and tight, and just sew over that previously sewn seam that closes the pillows. So, now we have two together, just like that. So, give me a second, and I'll bring the camera close, and you can watch me build this. So I went ahead and grabbed the next two so that I can show you. So here's the first two sewn together. It's a quarter inch seam. Again, what I'm doing is I'm taking the pillow, putting them right sides together. You gotta smash them down just a little bit. Lining up those two corners, and I'm just gonna take these two corners first, put them under the machine, and put a couple stitches in it. Then I'm gonna align these other two Laying them right sides together, obviously. I'm going to line the next two, and I'm kind of just going to move the pillow, manipulate the pillow out of the way, sort of, but making sure that I'm going over the pillow. So the seams that close the pillow, so they're like this. So the back side's going to look like this. You're going to be like, well, what do you do with that when it's done? Just wait and see. That part will come soon. So again, I'm going to grab the next pillow, I'm going to put it over the way I want it to go, and I'm going to start with just these top two corners right here, and I'm going to line it under the machine, put my press foot down, it's, it's my third hand pretty much, keeping the pillows out of the way, sometimes you have to push the fluff back out of the way, I'm going to line these two edges up, keeping the fluff out of the way, and I'm just going to sew over the original seam line that's there, which is a quarter inch in. So you have to use a little bit of finger manipulation to hold them down, but it, it's not that hard. So I'm going to grab the next two. Actually, I'll just grab three so they're up here with me. And I'm going to put this right sides together. I'm going to hold these, obviously, right sides together. <laughs> I'm just going to hold these right here, put a couple stitches in, keeping, making sure that you have that needle down function, which is best for this project. I'm going to hook these two ends together. I'm going to hold them with another finger. And I'm just going to manipulate the puff out of the way. So again, I just sewn right across on the seam from the original quarter inch seam, hooking them together. They are nice and tight. And you'll know if you get it right, because you'll see there's going to be some stitching through, but the puffs sit so close that you're never really going to inspect that stitching. So let's do this again.
much just sewing on the line from the previous one, pushing puffs down, lining them up just like you would normally with other quilt blocks, except this way we have to push all the fluff out of the way. And I sometimes pull quality check pretty much. Just pull them apart and look to make sure you're sewn. You can't see your previous stitching line there. Obviously it's going to be cute. I never said it was going to be easy. <laughs> nah, it really is easy. So I'm just lining these up. I give it. I always give it a couple of stitches to be my third hand. The way it goes. And then just line them. Sometimes I can go all the way down. Sometimes I have to manipulate it the rest of the way. making sure we get this whole seam and this whole seam. So when I spread it, I don't see any of my previous stitching lines and or if I do, it's just a minute amount. Now that that's done, I'm going to lay it all back where it goes. So those are the rows. Now let's put the rows together. So for this section, um, I Standing is good. It's okay. It's probably the best way to do it because you're right above the project and you're able to hold things down. But when you're connecting these rows, it's good to have either stand up above it so you can hold things and or sit so that you can control where it's sitting or hanging because there's a lot of lining up to do and it does not have to be perfect. Not like quilting scenes when you're lining up um, quilt squares. This is just a little bit different and it's pushing a lot of puffs down. So let's get to this. So here's my two first rows of puffs. These are my two first rows. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to the top and I'm going to put these two rows right sides together like I was doing to hook the puffs together. But this time we're manipulating this whole seam. So now like I said, the standing is probably easier. So I'm going to start by giving myself a third hand and starting a stitch. Then I'm going to come here, and there's no worries about pressing seams. If you want, you can. I'm just going to lay one one way and one the other. Make sure that I can see both of these and that they are lined up. 
pushing the puffs out of the way. I'm kind of just going to go a little bit slower than my normal speed and I'm stopping at a seam. And I'm going to hook both puffs together on the next set. I'm going to come down. puffs down. The top, don't worry about, they're going to start folding over. All you're worried about is what's down here and flipping your seams one, one way, one the other. It just reduces the bulk, even though there's a lot of bulk technically in this whole entire puff. And if you need to, because the other way you can't check, you might have to break thread Come back and make sure, just like when you attached the two. Oops, I knew I was seeing something wrong. Just in case, make sure that your needle stays good. So then I'm going to re-thread this and go back to that spot that I want to fix because it's just too shy of a quarter of an inch for me. I need it to show a little bit more of the seam. Oh my goodness. And I can't get this needle threaded. Oh, there we go. So I'm going to come back up where I noticed that it's not catching enough. Slide this under, and I'm just going to do a slight back stitch right here. Only because I broke thread. I'm going to hold these puffs down. This with some more piece. There we go. Again, I'm just going to hold this down. Going down this edge. Flipping these seams. They kind of nest. If your pieces are all cut the same size and you fill them all about the same, they nest just right. And come up to them slowly. I'm going to push them out of the way, these are puffs, as I go, using a lot of hand and finger movements to line all of this up just right. We want to make sure we gather enough of that seam. We don't want it falling apart or any of the puffs to fall apart as we go. This will be on the inside though, so if it's not straight and it gathers up, that's fine because this is going to be on the inside of what we are creating afterwards. I'm pretty much getting to each seam slowly but surely. That's what we want. And this end didn't catch the way I wanted to right here. So again, I'm just going to come, drop it down, take a back stitch. Push these pillows like I'm really literally manipulating the little pillows. Okay. Taking the seam just a little bit higher. I'm trying to at least either be on the line or past my previous seam line. So I'm going to check them all and look at these. I'll even bring it over to show you. See how well you can see that. They are lining up. They're not, they don't need to be perfect. But if you manipulate it enough, they will lay just like any quilt seam. Okay. So, actually it goes this way. 
So I'm going to grab another row and show you how this works one more time because this part kind of takes me a few minutes and I don't have the camera space to show you that many. So I'm going to grab another row. So I'm going to lay it up here just like so. Make sure it's where it's supposed to be. That's the way it was laying. Put it right sides together, the big, whole, big huge puff. And again, I'm just going to line these two corners up first. And I'm going to push it all down. And I'm going to give myself just a small stitch. Make sure your needle stops in the down position. And I'm just going to start manipulating the puffs. And lining them up along the way. Try to keep your fingers out of the way. Don't run over your fingers with the needle. Not be good. Just hold the puffs out of the way. They should move pretty nicely. This is just slow going for at least this stage. Everything else goes together pretty quickly. And if you have to, like I said, manipulate the puff, um, the polyfill out of the way as you're sewing the seams. Use your fingers under, around, and so on and so forth. Adjust yourself as you go. Try to clip that out. And I just flipping one seam one way, the other the other. You don't want these to fall apart. And they shouldn't, obviously if you stay on that seam line from closing your puffs. You see that one is close, so I'm going to come back while I'm here so I don't forget where I was. Take a back stitch. Push the puff over just a little bit more. Get on that line. There we go. Like I said, the leverage from standing is probably easier than sitting for this project. The last few puffs quilts that I have made, I have stood for all of them. Because it seems to be an easier thing. You can do this on a small machine because every seam is always to the right. You're never building into the throat of the machine. So it doesn't matter what size your machine is. It works on any size domestic or mid-arm machine to do this. It's the patience it takes to do this. That's all it is for this. I remember my first couple of them and I got really frustrated at first when I made these. Okay, I'm getting to the end. I'm just going to make sure these two puffs are lined up at the end. Sewing on that line, the previous stitch line, and making the puffs. And I didn't even back stitch at the end because they are nicely tied up. So there's another row. So I'm going to sew one more on, and then we'll come back when I'm finished and show you the next couple steps. So I'll show you when it's big when I sew the last row on instead. So I'm going to get that couple 
couple stitches again I'm just going to show you I'm literally nesting the seams like you would except I'm holding and manipulating along the way like I said they're going to turn open on the way out as long as they are down on the way in catching those seams and you're not missing anything. Sewing on the seam line, the seam line from the puffs. So if you see the seam right here, I don't know how well you can see it, probably can't. So that seam, we're actually just staying, when they're pu pushed together, we're staying on that line of the seam. Gonna take this all the way. Again, you can take it super slow if you need to. You know me, I'm not very super slow when it comes to this kind of stuff. I'm always, in always in a hurry to finish a project, so obviously the second thread break is because I actually had my finger in the way of the thread, or else it never would have broke just now. I'm just going to thread the needle. And then go back to where I was, pushing it back down. I come back about an inch above where I was, take a back stitch, and make my way back to where I hit my thread and knocked it out. The only thing is your fingers are super close to your needle and thread throughout this project because the puffs are pretty big. Okay, looking for my eyes. I'm going to line that up because that puff has got a little piece in the end. Let's just get past that. Make sure these two ends line up, which they do nicely. Take it all the way down. Check it. And there we have four pieces so far. So I'll be back when it comes to the end. rows here. <laughs> Last two rows. at the end and a little bit of a back stitch and I'm just forcing puff out of the way and it's a little bit easier standing I think with this step I'm gonna break right here and come back because I noticed it didn't catch all the way and it did, just not not to my satisfaction it is really heavy right now, so, well, not really heavy, but 
or something that your hands have to hold the whole entire time. That's the only reason it's so heavy. And see, it's getting harder because it's so heavy to catch the, the line. I just move the puff out of the way as best as possible. I come back, do what I gotta do. And I just try to sew on the previous stitch line that closed all these puffs together in the first place. And I'm matching each seam as I come to it, lining them up nicely, as best as possible, I should say. But they're coming out pretty good. And I'll show you when I get there. There's a lot of finagle when you get to this part. And make sure you have a big enough table to hold the project, depending on how big you are making your puff hole. And I just push the puff out of the way with one hand, using this hand to push it out of the way on the bottom, and this hand on the top. And then you can do little one inch sections at a time if you want. Excuse me, because I'm sick again, obviously. I've been sick, I should say, this whole time. During the whole process. <laughs> and it's hard to control a runny nose. But then you guys all know that. Everybody knows that. And I just make sure that they're lined up as they go through the sewing. Try not to run over your fingers. It's quite easy to get them in the way. So you just keep them out of the way as best as possible. And I'm almost at the end of this one. And we'll grab the last row and sew it on. And then I can show you where we're at and how we close up the bottom of this thing. Okay. And then I always go through, and I don't know how well you can see, but sometimes there's little pieces. I just get those as far down as possible, but there's that seam. They match up really nice. I mean, it's not that hard to get them to line up, you know? Just have to be patient. And I knocked my thread out. Which happens. <laughs> not while you're sewing, though. It happens in between the sewing if you're not careful. So let's grab that last row and get this on here. Okay, so this one goes here, obviously. Push it right sides together. And again, we just find this end, push all the fluff out of the way on both of them, hold them together. You can pin it if you want, but honestly, if you just slide it under the machine, your um, needle once you start sewing becomes your third hand. Back stitch a little. Come down just a smidge and start forcing it out of the way. Come down just a simple hair. I gotta pluck this out. So if you have a problem where it doesn't meet up at all because it pulled, just pluck those out and come back. I pluck from the top because it's hard to see what line it is and you don't want to open a puff up. So just go from the top. You just need to come back like an inch. So if you have any of these problems, just come back, pluck it out. It's pretty simple, it comes out really easily. But don't go all the way to the end. Just pluck it to where you need to. And again, I'm just going to use my fingers to manipulate this. And we'll, oops. Let's 
standing, so I hit the pedal wrong. <laughs> I have that pedal where if you lean your heel back or touch the bottom of the presser foot or the pedal, um, it chops my thread for me. So I've hit that quite a few times during this project. Being standing up, it makes it just a little bit harder. Alright. Let's try to zoom down this. And I'm just nesting the seams. I'm literally putting, pushing one up and one down. And I just find them. And I hold the whole thing between here and there. I line them up. And I just hold it with one finger. And I kind of stand in front of it and to the side of it at the same time because I'm holding the puffs up off the table. We want them to be off the table. So that if there's no pool, it's a tug. And that didn't come out as far as we wanted. Sometimes it just doesn't. But all the extra stitching ensures that it stays nice and together. They shouldn't fall apart though once they're sewn. These should be 100% really good and can be washed a zillion times. They're for babies. These are especially great for tummy time. For people with hard floors in their homes and they still want to be able to let their babies play on the floor. These are perfect, perfect gifts for that. See, I'm, I'm using my fingers because I have to push some out of the way and not try not to let it pull. So I just a couple stitches at a time because in some areas the puff is just a little bit fuller or it's sitting differently. As long as you stay on that line, all should be well. Just keep it nice and flat. Keep pushing the puff out of the way. It requires a lot of hand movement, but it's a good thing there's not as many rows, you know, with these puff quilts because they fill up fast. And they sew up pretty quick too. stitched right there to come back to where I wanted it to be. We're coming up on the end now. Once you get to the ends, it's a lot easier to hold the fabric down and the puffs down. And there we have it. So again, I just go through and I look at all these seams. And I'm like, oh, hey, that's good. That's good. I just, I like to spread them apart because if you spread them apart and you can see your sewing, then you know you didn't get it right. So let me lay this down and I'll show you that. See, some aren't perfect. line right up. But it's 
nice and big. Moves around great. And that's it. For now. So I don't have enough space on my tablet anymore to make any more video. And I just lost the footage, I don't know how it happened, of putting the backing on here. So the backing is on. Now all we're doing to finish this off, and I'm going to show you and just so just a small bit because um, I don't have enough space to make a longer video, is I am going to fold this over once and then twice. And then I'm just going to sew it, folding twice, all the way around, making sure that it catches all of the edges of all of this, so all this edge. I'm just going to make sure that it catches, and I'm going to sew. I'm going to start down just a smidge so that it gets it, but I'm going to start right here real quick, making sure that I catch every single puff right here on the edge. And I'm just going to fold it twice and sew down, catching the whole edge. And I still have it on a big stitch length. Give me a second, I have to pause this. I needed more table to hold the project. So I'm just going to go around the whole entire thing. And I have the wide stitch length. Folding the puff out of the way. Folding the edge over. So I'm folding it in half and then folding it on top. come down to a corner and show you what I'm going to do. Fleece is very um, manageable when it comes to stuff like that. Very forgiving. This is a very simple closure, pretty much. And it's spray based on the back. You can see, I'm going to come to the end right here and I don't think you can see as well, but I'm just folding it in half, and I'm going to sew right off of it. All the way, all the way off. And I'm going to repeat the same process with every corner. So I'm just going to fold it in, in half, and then fold it on. And these ends are going to be kind of thick, so you might need a bigger machine for it. Alright, and then I'm just going to catch this and fold it up the whole way. So I'll be back. I sewed over them a few times. Once it's washed, all the stitching will hide. I have to go through and pull some um, threads off, obviously. You know, but other than that, it's stitched all the way around. 
it caught every end seam right here so nothing sticks out and there we have it so there's the back once it's washed it will lay differently it's nice and flat though it's picking up so much thread <laughs> the fleece does pick up thread from everywhere but there is a puff quilt thank you for watching enjoy